Hi, today I'm going to show you how test gap analysis works with TeamScale. So here you can see the activity perspective of TeamScale, where you find all the changes that happened in the system that we are looking at. And for this demo, we're using the open source.NET system Pinta, which is basically a paint program uh, for .NET. So you can see here all the different commits that were made over time should be quite familiar for developers and what you can also see here is for each commit at which time it was done the commit message together with the author uh, the revision number this is a git repository you can see the amount of files that were changed you can see also um, findings that were introduced so these are quality def deficits and um, but this is something that we want to look at in a different video. For now, we just want to concentrate on the task gap analysis. And in the task gap analysis, we combine changes, which we analyze in a static manner, with dynamic information, namely the test execution. So here are the changes, but we're looking at them in a different way in task gap analysis. And therefore, I change to the dashboard perspective. And this is a visualization of the complete system. We call this a test gap tree map. And on this tree map, you can see the complete system. Each of the rectangles correspond to a method in the source code. And the size of the rectangle corresponds to the size of the method in lines of code. Um, so methods that are near together in the source code will be near together on this visualization and together the bigger rectangle forms a class in the source code. So what do the colors mean here? Gray rectangles correspond to methods that were not changed since the baseline. Orange rectangles correspond to methods that were changed since the baseline. And red rectangles correspond to methods that were added since the baseline. So what do I mean by baseline? Well, for test gap analysis, we probably do not want to consider all the changes that have ever been made to the system. So a typical baseline would be the last release, for instance. Now, you'll say, okay, the baseline this is something I need to change constantly over time. This is true. So what you can do here is anytime you like, add a dashboard and go ahead and set a different baseline. We can see here, this is the 1st of November. But if we change this to, let's say, January of 2015, and we'd expect much bigger churn, so many more changes, and indeed, we see a lot more changes here. So there's an entire subsystem that was added uh, in this time frame. Now, structure-wise, structure we can see there are bigger lines here. These correspond to packages or subsystems in the system. And again, you can drill down to these more if you say, OK, I'm not responsible for the complete system. I just want to see what happened for a subsystem. You can do this here. Just edit the tree map and select, let's say, Pinterest effects and go ahead and save that and you see this is a much more uh, fine-grained view of the system of the subsystem that you that you're actually looking at so we have different methods in the effects bundle here but for the sake of the demo let's leave it like it was before so I said test gap analysis combines static information about changes which you can see here and dynamic information about the execution and therefore, we have a different tree map, which I can show you here. This is a so-called execution tree map. The visualization is exactly the same as we saw before. But here on this tree map, we show the execution information. And as you can see, everything is gray here. So there is no execution so far. Actually, we didn't execute the application so far. So that's not surprising. But we want to change that right now. So let's say we have a manual test case for Pinta. And <clears throat> I just want to underline here that manual test cases are much more costly usually in the, when, when scheduling the test cases in the end of the test phase before the release. So it's actually much easier to do a complete execution of all your unit test, test sets than it is to uh, execute, if you want, um, all the manual test cases that you have for a system. So this is why we concentrate on the example of manual test cases here, but 
I want to underline that um, test gap analysis obviously also works with unit tests. So but let's go ahead and go to our test system. So this is a Windows system here. Um, just putting this into the to view, which corresponds to the test system where our application is installed. So let's go ahead and start it. And you can see it looks like a normal painting application. You have a canvas here, the different colors. Let's select one that's much more bright here. And uh, you have all the tools that you that you know from different painting applications. I just set a different brush size. And what I want to show you now is um, the manual test case of testing the Gaussian blur with Pinta. So I selected a different brush size. I'm now going to paint something here and add the effect of Gaussian blur. Selecting a higher value here and as you can see, okay, it's blurring. So as a tester, I'd say um, this test was successful. So I close the application. So what you didn't see now is that um, under the hood, there is a profiler running on this test system, which actually uh, notes down which of the methods of this application under test were actually executed during the manual test. We call this a trace file. And I'm now going to upload the trace file to TeamScale. Doing this manually right now here. Usually you would do something like this with a Jenkins job automatically so that the tester doesn't have to bother about that. And if you're looking at the activity perspective in uh, TeamScale, we see, okay, there is manual test coverage that arrived uh, in the activity perspective. If you go back to the dashboard perspective on the churn tree map, so on the changes, we don't expect any differences. But if we go to the execution tree map, we can see now there's a lot of things that were executed. And you might be surprised by the amount of the execution, <clears throat> but it's actually quite normal. So there's a lot of setup code probably um, to get things running, but we can also see that, there, that the execution actually almost touches every subsystem. So there's a lot of things that have been executed during our manual test. Now the interesting information is, and that's actually what test gap analysis does, is if you combine the changes and the execution, we get what we call the test gaps. And that's what I want to show you right now. So on this tree map, you can see the actual test gaps. That's an overlay of the changes and the execution. So methods that are green here have been changed since the baseline or added, but have also been tested. And everything that's orange or red is what we call a test gap. That's, that means things that have been changed since the baseline, but they were not tested. And as we can see in this small example, there are already some, some test gaps. Usually in a real industry system, you will have many, many more. So things get actually more different, uh, more difficult in, in industry, obviously. So well, if we have a look in detail, we can also see that this method, for example, is the Gaussian blur effect uh, dot render method and now if I'm a test manager I have to decide which of the remaining test gaps let's say tomorrow is a release which of the remaining test gaps do I actually need to test and usually we say it's good to do this in a risk-based manner so this means if you have some migration code for example or you have code that's not actually productive yet it's, it has been developed but it's not in the actual release it's not uh, executable. Um, this is something you might not need to test, but in the end the important thing is that you have the chance to do a conscious decision which of the remaining test gaps you actually want to test. So let's say for Pinta we are the test manager and we say okay we did a lot of development in the effects bundle so I just want to make sure that there is no change that goes into production that has not been tested. So this method here, radial blur effect dot render would be a test gap I want to close. So I go ahead and tell this my test team and so let's go ahead and test the radial blur on the Pinta application. So I 
select a color, different brush size, and I paint something, go to blur, radial blur, and select a value that should make some difference. And as you can see, nothing happens. So we actually found a bug here. And if I'm a tester, I quit the application right now and I file the bug or say the test case was not successful. In any case, and as this is usually done um, in an automated way, we are uploading coverage again to TeamScale. And you can see, okay, there is again an analysis in progress. Uh, the coverage is being analyzed. And if I go back to the dashboard perspective and to the test gaps, you can see that this method is actually green right now. So what does this mean? On the one hand, it means, okay, great, our um, instrumentation works well. But on the other hand, you'd say, okay, um, you just showed us that there's a bug in the Pinter application actually in this method. Uh, but anyway, the method is green. So this is a point I want to stress because it's really important. Um, a green method does not mean that the test case was successful. This information you have to note down in a different place, for example, in a ticket. So, but what this means is that the test execution passed in this method. The opposite is always true. Any bug that's in an orange or red method, you cannot have found because you never actually executed this method in a test case. So that's very important to see. Okay, so let's say um, we found the bug and the development team now fixes this bug. I'm just um, simulating this right now. So we have to wait for a second until the changes arrive at team scale that I just simulated. Okay, they are. And we see there is a fix for the divide by zero and radial blur effect. And now this is also important. Let's go back to the test gaps dashboard and you can see that the method actually is orange again. So it's important to note that test gap analysis is aware of the order of things here, the order of actions that have been taken. If you have a method that's new or changed in this case, then it's orange. If it was tested, it gets green. If it has been changed again after the last test, it gets dirty again if you want. So this method is orange again right now because there was a fix made in this method. So let's go ahead and check if the fix actually worked. We again start our, math, our uh, program in the test environment. Do the same thing as we did before. Uh, I have to paint something here. Select effects, blur, radial blur. <clears throat> and as you can see, something happens here. So actually the blur has been fixed. So we are actually happy closing the application. And if we upload coverage again, what we do right now, and go back to team scale, wait for a second and refresh this, we can actually see that the method has become green again. So that's what we actually would expect here. And if we go to the activity perspective, we can see, okay, there has been test coverage uploaded for a new version. So this is 1701. And on the test gap uh, dashboard, we can actually see that things are green. And together with the information that we have in the ticket, we can now be sure that we don't have a problem here anymore. So this is test gap analysis with TeamScale and I'm happy to help you out if you want to try it out or evaluate TeamScale. Just let us know.